Hi, I'm, I'm Mike Hartman. I'm a breast surgeon just a few blocks away from here at NUH. I've been to Singapore about five years. I come out of Stockholm uh, where uh, I also worked as a breast surgeon. I love Singapore and I love Asia, but what struck me very early is that presentation here is much different from what it, it is in Sweden. Uh, with the first six months working together with Philip here, I saw more advanced breast cancers than I had done in 10 years in Sweden. And I knew that it doesn't have to be like that. Changing it is not easy, but I just know it doesn't have to be like that. So I had a chat with Philip, and over the years, it has actually grown into this. <laughs> yeah, so we, we figured, okay, let's see if we can do something about it in our own little personal way. And so here we are today, telling you a little bit about that idea. What we came up with was to do something a little bit outlandish. We're going to take two motorcycles and ride from Singapore to Sweden. Uh, we'll be passing through most of the Asian continent and uh, uh, to Turkey and then uh, from to, through the rest of Europe uh, to, to Sweden to the Karolinska Institute. So essentially it's a ride from Singapore to Sweden. Um, but it's, a, it's not just a long ride, even though it's called a long ride. Uh, we're doing it as a long ride with a cause. And that cause is to draw attention to uh, breast cancer in Asia. Um, there, even though there are more breast cancers in the West, there are far more breast cancer deaths uh, in Asia. And the reason for that is because Asian women don't come early. Asian women come when their cancers are fairly advanced. By and large, many don't come for screening. And as a result, the cancers which are diagnosed are diagnosed late. The treatment is far less pleasant and the survival figures are also not so impressive. How, how do you solve that? Here in Singapore, I think we have a message. The message is simple. We just want women to go for their checkup, go for screening. But if we want to translate that into message into Thailand, into Laos that we're going to pass through, going for mammography screening isn't going to be the answer. So the answer to try to solve early or avoid late presentation and get women to come early is going to be a different message in many of these countries. And that's a huge challenge, but it also makes this journey fascinating to see how we can learn more and hopefully uh, not come up with an answer, but at least uh, get a better understanding of the question. What we're trying to do is that we're, when, when we go across these Asian cities, in many places we're doing the traditional way of increasing breast cancer awareness in the form of lectures or tutorials. And, uh, but what I think is more interesting is that when we go to these cities, we've also been given an opportunity to interview many of the breast cancer women, the women with breast cancer, and their carers, and occasionally some healthcare administrators as well. So when we say that we're trying to increase breast cancer awareness in Asia, it's not just trying to increase breast cancer awareness as a public health activity when we arrive, but in a slightly different way, we're trying to tell everybody what it's like to be an Asian woman in Asia with breast cancer. What, what is it like? What are the inhibitions? What stops her from coming? Uh, what facilities are available? What are the fears? What are the beliefs? So that at the end of the ride, we hope to put together a cultural picture of breast cancer, breast cancer in Asia, uh, how culture affects presentation for breast cancer. Because what we have learned is that if you take a Western-style screening program, a Western-style public health program, and you put it in an Asian population, you do not get very good, you don't get the desired result. We need to contextualize our public health message to get across to Asian women within an Asian culture. We've got so many people, uh, we've spoken to so many people and got so many people passionate about this. I don't know about Mike, but the main feeling I have is I hope I don't let anybody down. Yeah, I, and think, I, you know, I completely agree. At, it's, at times, yeah. I almost wish we did this below the radar yeah. and we just came to Stockholm and said, OK, we just completed the yeah. ride. Yeah. But now it's very public and we, yeah. it's all, we have to... We have we, to go now. We have to go now. <laughs> This huge project would never be doable just by me and Philip alone. It's, it's a huge team behind us. It's our manager, Connie, 
it's our boss CN, it's all of our colleagues that have been supporting us and actually covering our duty to make sure that the care of patients here in Singapore remain um, the same. Uh, it's our families, my wife saying yes, uh, I know reluctantly saying yes, but she did say yes. Um, so there are a lot of people to say thank you to. When we leave today, we'll be going past ACSI and they've got a, a wonderful student there by the name of Dion who's put together a, a, a tailor-made bandana. And uh, the Methodist Girls School has given us two Lego pieces which we, we plan to showcase uh, in all the famous uh, landmarks we go to. So it's something that's, uh, you know, it, it's a lot harder work than just doing a long ride because you've linked a cause to it. But the cause is what gets other people involved because they feel passionate and they see the problem, they want to do something. But if they can't ride, they can at least help. And the help has been quite unstinting and, and quite moving sometimes. Okay, so the trips practically started uh, two years ago. It, now, the bags are packed. The passport is valid. The visas are okay, more or less. More or less. Uh, still don't have an Iranian visa. Uh, there's fuel in the tank. Am I worried? I'm scared shitless. <laughs> Can you say that? <laughs> uh, but I'm very thrilled at the same time. Uh, never done anything like this ever. Uh, will I fail? Probably. Will I succeed in some way? Hopefully.